Sorry about the delay. Uh, I am here. I had some urgent business I need to take care of, but um, I'm here. So, you guys know what to do. I'm Keno Thomas with stemwithkino.com, and this channel is for tutoring Amazonians. Amazonians that are in the career choice program, you, it may have been like a long, long time since you've, uh, handled math and science subjects. So that's why I'm here. Doesn't cost you a thing. You can send, I'm sorry. You can send, uh, your questions. You can take a picture with your smartphone and send your questions to my email. And it's not just for Amazonians, but they're uh, family members as well. So if you have a kid or a child struggling with math, um, I'm the remedy. I like that. I'm the remedy. I got to say that in my serious voice. I'm the remedy. So let's get the email pulled up here and we will begin. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you guys for pressing the play button and get myself organized here. Okay, I got that. And, uh, that's in. Okay. All right, got a couple of emails there, and I am just, uh, I'm coming to the message board now, guys. It's like, well, you're just now getting to the message board? Yeah, I'm just now getting to the message board. And I am in. Okay. Looks like Alejandro Gomez. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for pressing that play button. And you, pr I see the one like, so that's probably you to hit the like button. And I thank you so much for that. Who else is in the room? I'm posting my email now. K I E N O T H O M A S. Hmm. Not uppercase. Maria's in the building. All right. Okay, so that is the email that you can send your questions to. K-I-E-N-O-T-H-O-M-A-S at gmail.com. And, um, what else? We're actually three minutes ahead of when we were going to start. I was planning to start at 8.15, but I'm here. So, uh, welcome, Alejandro. Welcome, Maria. OAR for United States Navy. Alejandro, what test are you preparing for? And is my volume sounding okay, guys? Just type it into the message board, please. Just to make sure my volume's good. I'm so glad uh, there has not, there hasn't been any issues. Because uh, for like a month stretch, it was like, man, I was like going through some issues with echoing and all kinds of crap and trying to get the encoder 
uh, taken care of and stuff like that. So it looks like I've had like actually for several weeks, I guess, a really, really good stretch. No issues. Loving when there's no issues and I can just kind of boom and go and do my thing. So let's see. Updating. Okay, um, I'll, I'll bring up a topic. In standardized tests, um, there is something called a three, four, five triangle. And I could actually, I could make like a hundred million questions off the three, four, five triangle. So, hold on, let me move my laptop back. So what, am I, what do I mean by three, four, five triangle? Uh-oh. Pulling on my cord. What do I mean by three, four, five triangle? What I mean by a three, four, five triangle is get myself together here. This off. Because <sighs> three sides are triangle. And if Let me just look at the screen real quick. This is a right angle. Yeah. So if this side is three and this side is four, then this is going to be five automatically. That's what I mean by the three, four, five triangle. But I can make so many triangles based off this three, four, five. This could be a six, eight, ten. Uh, it could be a 30, 40, 50. It could be a 300, 400 side. And then the hypotenuse would be 500. So there's, there's a lot of variations. And you have to get into the practice of spotting them. Because if you can spot them, then you can answer the question like that. For instance, I'll give you an example. There is a question, it's a word problem, and it has a reference point, right? So it says, okay, there's two boats leaving a port. So here's the port. And it'll say one boat goes 90 miles north. And the other boat goes 120 miles west. And it'll ask, how far are the boats, boats apart? Well, if this guy went north, this guy went west, that is a right angle. And if you have boat one here and boat two here, then the question would ask, how far are these two boats apart? And I see the three, four, five. Here's the three side, and here's the four side. And what I mean by that is, if I look at, the 90 and the 120, um, 90 is three times 30 and 120 is four times 30. So that's, we got 90 and 120. And so this will be 150 or five times 30. So I can make hundreds and hundreds of questions off the three, four, five triangle and in a lot of standardized tests, you will see this three, four, five triangle. It's crazy. You know, um, you know, people, they do brief with me and they'll be like, oh yeah, I saw this on the test. Hold on a little stabilization there. Um, but you know, so, oh, I saw this question on the test. They said, you know, one train went north 90 miles and the other one went east 120 miles. And then, you know, I'm sitting there, oh, I, I do a lot of math. So. I automatically see the three, four, five situation. Um, very good, Maria. <laughs> Maria's on it. She is not playing. <laughs> she put the 150. Yeah. So the three, four, five triangle, guys. Uh, if you can see them, you could rip through those questions because it's all about saving time. Um, you want to save time. Um some other test taking tips like 
you have what you call high stakes exams or tests and basically what these tests do they're like life changers like oh if i pass this test and i can get this job or i can qualify or i can get recruited for this this particular type of job so when we take uh even like the sat or the mcat MCAT, uh, or the gre the math gre is what i specialize in but when you take these tests there's some big high reward um in store for you so you want to be really really good at solving questions rapidly okay you do not want to sit there wasting 10 minutes on one question when you could have you should have just like just picked something you should have just made like an educated guess because let's say if i had like 30 questions to answer in the space of 25 minutes if i spend 10 minutes on one question then that's not going to be cool because I could have built points just by just skipping that question or just filling it in and making your educated guess. And then you could have answered like five, six more questions at least out of that test bank. Um, so we have to be really, really, really good about time management. Um, and, um, you know, that's uh, paramount. Okay. Joe has a question <sighs> let me read through all the little lettuce and tomato and get to the meat of this thing and okay this is a question about uh something called ground effect and most people aren't aren't, aren't pilots in the room but this is uh, dedicated to math and science. And since the question is in my email, I'm going to address it. So the question is about ground effect and how I don't believe it's a cushion of air. I don't believe it's, I don't believe it's a cu cushion of air because it's not a cushion of air. So first off, let me explain ground effect. Ground effect is a situation when the airplane becomes airborne before it's recommended takeoff speed. This is normally on very hot and humid days, normally. And so, like, you're, you're, you're going to take off and the plane just seems to just... Okay. Uh, that's one characteristic of ground effect. Another characteristic of ground effect is when you come in for a landing and it just seems like the plane just kind of does some excessive floating. So I can see the bottom of my board, and that's what I'm kind of like looking in reference to, right? So you'll come down, and it'll just seem like boom. Now, it will feel like a cushion of air, but it is not a cushion of air, Joe. Um, what is happening is ground effect. So back to the definition. Ground effect is the interference of the airflow patterns, or actually, it's the interference of the Earth's surface around the uh, wing. It inter the Earth's surface interferes with the airflow patterns around the wing. Normally when an airplane is like greater than one wingspan, the wind actually, or the relative wind actually kind of, as this plane cuts through the air, the wind air molecules actually kind of jump up to meet it. And when you are, and so you have an upwash and you have a downwash. So basically, when we get near the surface less than one wingspan, we have less air molecules that come up because the ground is there. And so as a result, what happens is uh, we get a reduction in drag. We still have the same amount of lift, the upward force, but then we have less drag. So we just have more lift when we get in a ground effect, if you would. Or actually, no, the same amount of lift, less drag. So... Uh, that's why I say I don't believe it's a cushion of air. Uh, theoretically, it is not. You just lost drag. You have the same amount of lift. You have less drag when you are less than one wingspan within the Earth's surface or the runway. Landing area. Okay. Next question. All right. All right, how long do you think it takes for proper preparation? Okay. 
Mark. You didn't even say where you were from, Mark. People say where you're from. All right. Um, Mark wants to know how much time do I think is, uh, it looks like he's applying that for everything, you know, army, Navy, air force, Marines and stuff like that. And, um, I would say you should have at least three months preparation, at least three months. This way you can work out all the weak areas. You know, if you're being tutored, um, you probably need more if you're doing it on your own, because if you have a proven tutor that has gotten people through these exams, then you probably only need about three months. Now, everybody's different. People come from different backgrounds and strength. They have different strengths and weaknesses. So I can't really give you a magic number. I can just say about because you could get to that point and then, you know, uh, and still may, and you still may not be ready, but, uh, basically what a tutor will do is help you with your problem solving techniques and make you more efficient, um, when you're taking these high stakes tests and, um, you know, uh, it's really all about, like about three months, but it depends on the person. Really, it depends on the person, the chemistry, uh, between the tutor or test preparer. I say that right. Or the person that is helping or assisting uh, that tutoring or teaching uh, session. And it depends on what test as well. I personally believe... Hey, Avery, how you doing, hon? I personally believe that... Um, Avery popped up. I forgot my... My point. Um, test preparation. Yeah, so, I mean, different people are at different levels. Um, there's no magic number for, oh, you know, I'm going to take two months or I'm going to take m one month or five lessons. It, it really depends on the person. Um, I was talking about factors. Uh, what you know already, uh, your chemistry with your the person helping you prepare for the test. Um, Ileana in the building. It depends on uh, the person helping you with the test. Uh, it may not be that great. I mean, it's just like your school system situation. There are a lot of teachers that know a lot of things. And they're very good and they're very skilled. But they can't transfer knowledge. That's the thing that I try to master. No matter what your background, where you're from, what you know, I try to be very, very, very good at transferring what I know to you. And if you don't get it, I'm never ever gonna yell and scream like, I can't believe you didn't believe, you didn't, you didn't know that, I just did it on the board. Sometimes you have to exercise patience. You know, uh, with our school system, you know, it's, you know, I have my opinions. I'm, I'm not even going to put them out there. Anybody that's been uh, in con in contact with me or dealt with me knows how I feel about the school system. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's just, you know, it's one of those things. It depends on a person and stuff. And let's see. Next question. Uh-oh, Avery is here, and she is coming, and Maria is her tag team partner. <laughs> They're going to pull some questions out. Okay. Um, looking for something interesting. This is interesting. Why don't I speak? Oh, this must be a teacher. <laughs> Why don't I speak highly of the public school system? Um, I'm not beating up on the public school system. It does what it can. 
um, and I believe like a lot of, of Americans don't really understand. I'll give you I'll give you an example, and I'm not like bashing or attacking any racial racial group i just you know i've done a little bit of research being in this field of teaching tutoring um and here's the thing a lot of people would be like okay well asian kids or indian kids or 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 you know these kids are just they're super super smart and they could have good genetics you know, good genetic makeup from their parents primarily, but there's certain things that you're going to have to do to be successful. All right. You can't just like, I can't take my head and just go like this. And by osmosis, I'm going to learn everything that I need to know. What book is this? Oh, the private pilot ground school. So, that's not how we train pilots. We don't just go, oh, mm, and okay, and the knowledge just sinks in. Okay. Uh, as far as our school systems go, I know that a lot of foreigners, uh, they keep their kids away from TV. Um, not all. Can't say all. I'm not speaking to absolutes. But I've grown up around a lot of foreigners, um, Asians, Indian people. They're good people. They're cool people. You know, they're hard workers and stuff like that. And they just have a work ethic. Like, and I hate to say this, but I don't know. Okay. Americans, we could be lazy. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> we could be lazy. You know, and a lot of, that's why a lot of foreigners, they come over, they kick our butts. Because, you know, they come with a mission. You know, um, I think most Americans are a part of that microwave society where, oh, I'm just going to push a button and then, oh, you know, oh, I got a degree or I got a certificate or I have some type of skill. Uh, but uh, they did a, they did a uh, poll and uh, this was years ago. And then this poll, it said that, you know, like a lot of foreign kids get about 20, 15 to 20 hours of positive reinforcement, which means I'm going to school. And then after that, after school, the school, I'm putting in an additional 15 to 20 hours. That's 80 hours a month. All right. And you do the math, whatever your school year consists of, but we get really, really good. I mean, all right, I'm not poking fun at anybody, but I I see a couple people right here in the room, you know, when they started, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. You're only going to get good at math by doing math. Okay. Um, you know, I always say, okay, how do you get out of your bed and go to the bathroom without turning on any lights? You know, the territory It's repetition. You've done it again and again and again, it's just like pilot training. We get in a pattern. We do the same thing, same process. Keep us standardized. Okay. Full, all right. Clear for takeoff, full power, airspeed alive, engine instrument screen, rotation, which is raising the nose wheel and everything. And the process th is the same over and over again. So as a result, your retention is greater and you retain more. So it's just getting in there and just doing it. I mean, I noticed like my freshman year of college, like there were people, they just graduated, but they didn't know certain things about math, some of the more basic concepts. And so, you know, you, you just have to do the work. There's no, there's no getting around it. There's no, oh, I'm going to tutor with this guy for like two weeks and I'm going to be ready. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, any website to practice math problems? Oh, you could Google that. You could, I mean, they're all over the place. Maria, what's your question? Did you send one? All right. So, yeah, I'm not beating up on the school system. Um, it's just, we have to do more. We have to. And that entails, what does it entail? Some delayed gratification.
Maybe you want to go out and do other stuff, have fun and all that and everything. Just have the discipline to just lock yourself down, crack that book open, whatever the subject is. Because if you read it long enough, you will absorb it. Sometimes you might get frustrated with a certain subject. Read a little bit, put it down. Read a little bit, put it down. But eventually you will get it. You will get it. You know, but, uh, yeah. All right. Wow, I guess somebody must have brought their book to work. <laughs> it's funny. I'm looking at this picture, and they're saying they're, they're at work right now. They'll watch this video later. May I have answers? Maria, please. Uh, this is a sucker punch this question. What I mean by that is it's a little bit of a trick question. I will read it aloud. It costs $1 per square yard to waterproof Kansas. Canvas. I said Kansas. <laughs> Let's take it from the top. It costs $1 per square foot square yard to waterproof can canvas. What will it cost to waterproof a canvas truck cover that is 15 feet by 24 feet? Okay, so here is the sucker punch that I call it, or the tr trick question. What they're telling you, they're coming out, and we process word problems line by line. It's saying it costs a dollar per square yard to waterproof canvas, but the dimensions that they give you the truck cover, or the canvas truck cover, is 15 feet by 24 feet. So the first thing is you're going to have to avoid getting set up in that trap. Now, I'm calling it a trap. Do I really think it's a trap? No, I don't. Well, it could be. But why not give me what it costs in square feet? All right. Um, so, dollar takes $1 per square yard to waterproof Kansas. Canvas, 15 feet by 24 feet. I think those were the dimensions. So we need to divide by three, and that will tell us how many yards. So this is five feet, and this is 80 feet, eight feet, sorry. 15 divided by three is five. 24 divided by three is eight because, and why did I divide by three? Because there are three feet and one yard. Okay, so there's three feet, one yard, and so, I divided both of these numbers, and now I have yards. Now what I need to do is multiply them together, and that is going to be 40 square yards. A dollar per square yard, 40 square yards, 40 bucks. And our answers were A, $20, B, $36, C, $40, D, 360 whoa. And E, $400. And so I'm going to go with answer C because I've determined that it costs a dollar per square yard. So you have to watch that. There are a lot of these things built inside tests where if you don't read and you don't interpret properly, you're going to run into a pitfall. And believe me, they got that dummy. Well, I shouldn't call it a dummy answer. I can't do math in the shower. You're not trying hard enough, Viper. No, that's what no, don't do math in the shower. Your book will get wet. Or your electronic device. Speaking of electronic devices, I saw a video recently. Moms, dads, friends, family, do not, do not, do not, do not um, plug your phone in the wall and keep it by your bathtub. Um, I saw a video. Uh, somebody got electrocuted like that. And, uh, you know, shout out to the parents of that family because it's like, it's crazy. Uh, but apparently she had, and I know all my young people or my young viewers out there, you guys are, 
You're part of that me now generation, and that's okay. I know who you are. Nah, I'm joking. But uh, yeah, it's very, very dangerous to plug your cell phone in the wall and just have it by the tub or any water source. Water and electricity don't mix, and water is an excellent conductor of electricity, so uh, we want to avoid the two. Now, if you just have your cell phone by the tub, which I don't recommend that anyway because you're probably going to get it wet and damaged anyway, um, and I'm going to talk about a remedy for that anyway, but definitely you're playing with fire if you, uh, oh, okay, and then uh, Google Play actually text my words to you. Okay, that's pretty neat. So you literally are in the shower, Viper. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity. The Sakino Tutor. I like that. Dedicated. Uh, I guess, yeah, subscriber. That's awesome. You other people don't, uh, don't, uh, what are, don't Bluetooth me from the shower. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that was silly. All right. Serious talk. Mm, yeah, so, um, I can't do math in the shower. All right, yeah, I got distracted by that. So, I work in IT for IKEA. All right. Shout out to the IT department at IKEA. Very good, Viper. Very good. Do not change your phone. Don't I change your phone. I put it in your room. Not let it go. I try. Great, great, great. See? So. That's good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about test prep. Checking my time. We got 20 minutes for tutoring Amazonians. Send questions, folks. Um... Let me think, let me think, let me think. Well, let her rip. Maria, let her rip. That's what we're here for, to solve math problems. <sighs> I've had a long day, excuse me. Long day. But I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. I'm going to be like, Done and done. Let's have that crush, Maria. In the meantime, I'll look up my email. Oh, that is a wonderful, 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 wonderful question. Subtract one foot six inches from two feet four inches. I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful test taking tip for this one. Um, I won't say... I discovered it. I guess I, I discovered it as far as I'm concerned, but I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has uh, figured this out. So the question is asking us to subtract one foot six inches from two feet four inches. All right, so two feet four inches, and we're going to subtract one foot six inches. Yeah. Now, six is bigger than four inches. So this is what I'm going to do. The original uh, piece that we're going to cut from, cut away from is two feet, four inches. But why not call it one foot and 16 inches? We are still two foot, four inches. There's 12 inches and a foot. So... We'll call this one foot, 16 inches. All right. And so if we subtract one foot, 16 inches, well, we subtract one foot, six inches. This zeroes out and that leaves us with 10 inches, folks. So to recap, the only thing I did was 
I took my one, two feet, four inches, which is 24, 28 inches. And then that's another thing you could have done. You could have just converted everything to inches and then subtracted. it. But I changed two foot, four inches to one foot and 16 inches. So we have our one of the foots out of the two. We have our second foot out of the two and four inches left over. So when you set it up like this, you can subtract it very, very easily. <clears throat> so, good question, Maria. Good question. Okay. <clears throat> wow, that's a basic question. What is an MOS? An MOS is a military operations specialty. It's what you specialize in. Like someone in the army might be, oh, I'm 22 Bravo or 33 Alpha or whatever. So it is a designator for your job, your particular job type. Now, the Air Force doesn't have uh, MOSs. They have Air Force specialty codes. Uh, it's the same. It's just like the MOS. Kind of job, job, job description. What's required of you and things of that nature. And uh, so there's not any major thing about uh, MOS, military operations specialty. It kind of designates what you do job-wise. Okay. For instance, Viper might be going to be a 15 Romeo. Okay, so it is a identifier. It's a job identifier. That's what a military operations specialty is. Or an Air Force specialty code, which is the AFSC. <clears throat> Want me to talk about it? Sure, you can talk about it. No problem. And guys, where are you from? Where are we from? I got these people in the room. And uh, nobody says the test that they're preparing for or, or anything. <laughs> and I know there's a time delay. You can't talk about it. In the meantime, in between time... All right, Pot Sound Limerick. There's a mall out there off of, uh, what is that road? I don't think it's 522. I know, Avery. <laughs> no, you're on it. I'm whoa out. I'm like my grandma. She didn't say I'm worn out. I'm whoa out. That's different. To be worn out and whoa out, that's, that's two, two totally different things. If you're worn out, you're just a little tired. When you whoa out, that's like, what, Grandma? Okay. <laughs> Grandmothers have their own dialect and style of speak. My job will be repairing and maintaining a patchy helicopter for the Delta 15. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, another thing, too, is if the particular job you want in the military, it might not be available because, you know, I mean, I, it's an extreme case, but, I mean, it could happen. I mean, you know, troops are picked according to the needs of the military. So, number one, you got to qualify by taking the ASVAB, AFOQT, SIFT, uh, OAR. And then, you know, there has to be a need. We have to have so many, boom. 
uh, openings. All right, let's see here. Oh. <clears throat> All right, I'm so blah, 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 blah. All right, she becoming a crew chief, and they may have a good shot at becoming a pilot. You know what's crazy? Since we're on the subject, and then I'll end up qualifying again. You know what's crazy? <clears throat> Two things I, I think I probably would have done differently. Number one is, um, Aviation maintenance, man, it's like, it's it's a hot job. It's the thing to do. And yeah, 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 there's a mall. I guess, yeah, that is, there's an outlet. Actually, it's an outlet mall. But I remember going there. I used to have fun there. But, uh... <clears throat> I keep losing my train of thought. And GT score using their glasses and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, 422. So, yeah, I lost my train of thought. And I forget the name of that outlet, but it's a pretty cool outlet. <clears throat> Nonetheless, it's right kind of. If you take that, I'm trying to, I can't remember the name of the road, but uh, Pottstown Limerick Airport, we used to fly a pretty important guy out of there, and that runway is so short, man. Round out and flare. Uh, for a WOCS, uh, let's say I'm eventually helping to qualify for Warrant Officer Candidate School, and, and then go Rotary. Okay. Sounds like you got it all planned out. Mm -mm -mm. I know you could, but not for this channel. Next round, you can. I'm pretty sure Maria and uh, Avery are already working on something. Um, yeah, another thing I could talk about is <clears throat> how to make this benefit you. I mean, I'm here every week. Do you have questions? couple things you can't understand and um and whenever you're ready maria um uh you know mm, hold on hold on hold on hold on yeah whenever you're ready maria um mm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, email, distracted. I'm going to have to get like an assistant or something. I want to get a green screen. I don't even know how the hell they work, but a green screen would be pretty cool. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And answers, Maria. We may even hold that one off because we're like in the uh, 53 minute realm. Got about eight minutes. So, yeah, back to what I was saying how to make this channel work. You get your book, your text, your materials, whatever. Read, just read through, through them. And then take a picture. Snap with your phone. Just take a picture. 
and send it to my email, K-I-E-N-O-T-H-O-M-A-S at gmail.com. And I'm telling you, just like, you know, the little live stream hour we do here a week, you keep doing math, you're going to get good at it. You're going to get really good at it. Um, and a lot of people, oh, you're so smart. Um, I just like technical things. I've always had kind of like a knack for them. But even if you don't, just repetition will get you through. So. Okay. If one quarter wax covers 400 square feet, how many gallons of wax are needed to wax the floor of a 6,400 square foot office? All right. Just right off the top of my head, I want to say 16 gallons. But don't quote me on that yet. So, we have a floor. But let's just say, boom. This is 6,400 square feet. Now, one pail of whatever this material is floor wax um you got 400 square feet all right so we can make a ratio one to 400 equals 6400 and then x so basically all we would wind up doing is and it is 16 16 gallons. We would divide 60. No, yeah, we'll, we would cross multiply this or cross multiply this, but we cross multiply this and divide by this guy. So 64, 6400, zero, zero, 1, 6. Now, one thing, uh, oh, ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what happens when you'll get rest. 400. Now, what we could do is we could chop off two zeros, and then it would be 64 divided by 4 when we kill these, because we'll get the same answer if we whack the same number of zeros. And uh, mm, 1, 16. Check the back of the book, Maria, and I'll wait. But I know that's the answer. I'm sorry. I was a little arrogant. <laughs> it's like, I know that's the answer. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, primarily, this Tutoring Amazonians channel is for Amazonians, but... Uh, all my people are welcome to come if you subscribe to me somewhere else. Uh, feel free. Don't hesitate. You know, but uh, there's really not a whole heck of a lot that's going to happen in three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kill this one. And then um, I will uh, get the military test prep and FAA stuff done. All right. So that being said i'm kino with stemwithkino.com we didn't get very many math questions tonight that means you guys are my superstars like we don't need well so uh again this is uh kino thomas the channel is tutoring amazonians if you have any issues just you know let me know so uh that being said i'm gonna talk to y'all later Later, meaning like in the next three minutes, probably. And, um, mm, we will, uh, we'll, ki we'll kill it right there. That's fine. So, that's it. See you next week, eight to nine, tutoring Amazon Zonians. And then, if that's not your speed, then from, um, 9 to 8.
nine, eight to nine, nine to ten. All right. But um, I'm going to close this out. I'll see you guys. I'm here every week for Amazonians, eight to nine. Bye-bye.